Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Mighty Gamas episode 30. Today we're going to be talking about exaggerated ratings or falsely rated lithium ion and lithium polymer lipo batteries. Now lipos are actually lithium ion batteries, but the popular usage uh, separates those two. Now, at first thought, I was thinking, yeah, exaggerated ratings are dangerous. But I started thinking a lot more about it and about how other people talk about exaggerated ratings within the different communities. And it got a lot more complicated. And I want to go over some of those and, and present different sides of the story of what might make someone say it's dangerous and someone else say, no, it's not dangerous at all. Uh, so what are we talking about here? Exaggerated capacity ratings, milliampere hour ratings, are those okay? Probably, all, all on their own you know, uh, taking a 2000 milliampere hour battery and labeling it as 3000 milliampere hour shouldn't lead to any kind of increased risks or any kind of danger. Uh, we're not talking about how hard to use the battery, it's just how long the battery lasts. Now, exaggerated continuous or max pulse current ratings, well, that could be. Uh, this is where the debate is. Are those current ratings, when they're exaggerated, when they're ratings, is that dangerous? Now, probably the biggest problem for the communities is most people only look at the max or pulse ratings. And that's because it's the biggest number or the only number on the battery. You talk to the battery wrapping company and they go, oh, whoa, 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 that's not continuous. You know, that's, that's pulse. Well, I, I mean, how are they setting the ratings? That's important too, but we'll get into that a little more. So the big debate are exaggerated battery current ratings dangerous. Now, some say no, because they've never had a problem. I've been vaping for 10 years and, you know, I, I go at least double the continuous rating and I've never had a problem. Or, yeah, it's a 50, it says 50 amp in the battery, but I've never had one blow up on me. Well, the problem is our own personal experience with any battery is irrelevant to whether that battery is dangerous or is risky to use at certain current levels, at certain power levels. You could buy a hypercar and drive to work at 150 miles an hour every single day for 20 years and never have a problem. But we can never say that was okay or that was safe. Someone else could get into that car or their own car and drive 150 miles an hour at 150 miles an hour and crash the very first time because it is a dangerous thing to do on an American highway. So we can't use our experiences to go, oh, it's this or oh, it's that. If enough people start saying things, okay, maybe there's a hidden danger there we didn't know about, but the, the degree of risk is independent of any person's individual experience. Now, some say it's not dangerous because they know the ratings are exaggerated and they can take that into account. Well, that works if you know the ratings are exaggerated and most people do not. Most people like to believe or want to believe these big, huge numbers. That's what we want a battery to do. We want to have a tiny little battery do unbelievable things for us. Now, some say it can be dangerous, but hey, just use the battery below its, uh, its true rating, at or below its true rating. Again, that, that's wonderful if you know what the true rating is. That's a good way to help reduce any additional risk because it's never safe to use a lithium ion or, or a LiPo battery. There's always some risk. Uh, it can become physically damaged, there can be an internal defect, the device you're putting it in can cause the battery to fail if the device fails. So it's never safe, but we can help reduce additional risk by staying under the current rating. And some say, well, hell yeah, it's dangerous. It's an exaggerated rating. Of course it's dangerous. All these different approaches and all these different things you might hear, depending on who you talk to, leads to a lot of confusion. And, and who do you believe then? Um, What's true? Are they actually dangerous or not? Independent of what anybody might say. Like, you know, 150 miles an hour down American highway every day. That, it's pretty universally agreed upon that's dangerous. For the batteries, is it or not? Now, no one wants to hear this, I know, but the answer is, it depends. It, it, it depends because it's how the battery is being used or handled, but also depends because your risk threshold and your experience, even though I said, hey, that doesn't matter. 
the huge range of what people say to other people can make it seems dangerous or not dangerous. You know, if, if half the people who use a particular battery say, no, you can use it at 50 amps, you know, that's, that's okay. You know, none of us has ever had a problem. This affects how everyone else thinks about it. Yes, it's not talking about, is it actually dangerous or not to, but I wanted to bring up uh, community thoughts or community responses to someone asking a question whether it's dangerous or not, because it can affect what people think and how people feel. But certainly, independent, just looking at the science and data, how the battery is being used or handled has a huge effect. Again, never say safe. Now, look, I'm no battery expert. I'm someone who tests a lot of batteries and does a lot of reading and a lot of research, but I'm not an electrochemist, I'm not a material scientist. I don't have 85,000 degrees in some kind of battery science or something like that. But in my opinion, batteries with an exaggerated ratings aren't inherently dangerous, but they can be depending on how you use them. And this, this is how we get all these different opinions out there. If you've got a 20 amp battery and it says 50, amp, 50 amps on the wrap, you know, underneath the wrap, it's 20 amp battery. If you use it at 20 amps, well, okay, you're not adding a lot of additional risk. But if you take that 20 amp battery with 50 amps on the wrap and you use it at 50 amps, now you've got problems. So the exaggerated rating itself isn't an issue. It's how we're using it in relationship to that rating and to, its, to, its, to that exaggerated rating and to its true rating. Those, those two numbers are very important. I always want to emphasize that Doing things like this, a lot of people say, oh, you can pulse way above the continuous rating, blah, 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 stop fear mongering, etc. The performance is crap once you start getting near the continuous rating or above it. Running a 20 amp battery at 20 amps, well, you're stressing it hard, even if you're just pulsing it. That's hard use. But your performance isn't great too. Running at like 75% of that or something, maybe 15 amps, you're gonna, that battery's gonna run a lot more efficient, efficiently. You're gonna get better operation. Pulsing it at 40, 50 amps, 30 amps even, well, yeah, it might survive it. You might not have a problem ever for years, but you're getting really lousy performance, shorter usage time, less effective capacity versus using a you know, 25 or 35 amp battery, let's say at 30 amps. Oops, excuse me. Uh, so when are they actually dangerous? I say they can be dangerous. When does that happen? That starts when we start believing the exaggerated ratings. And this comes out of us either just not knowing or saying things like, oh, we can go double the continuous rating or something like that. And it's especially when you get these preposterous max or pulse ratings. And I say the preposterous because these battery wrapping companies don't have a standard. There is no standard for setting a max or pulse rating. And you might say, oh, well, wait, no, they say, hey, you can do five seconds on, 30 seconds off, and stop before you hit 80 degrees Celsius. There's all the criteria, right? Well, no, why, why is it five seconds on and 30 seconds off? Is, is that because of the voltage sag? Is it because of cycle life? Uh, is it because of you know, some combination of things? That matters, these are undefined. And because of that, we can't compare one battery to the other, which means we don't know which max or pulse rating might be genuine or not. Exaggerated capacity ratings, they're not a danger, I don't think. Not on their own. If any, something else is going on, okay. When are they dangerous? The max and pulse ratings can be a big problem. And I keep, you might go, oh, I've used it, again, so many people will say, oh, I've used it on the max or pulse rating for years now, no problem. Well. What happens if there's a malfunction? What happens if there's an auto firing situation in a vaping device or an accidental button pressed because something's in a backpack and the device wasn't locked? Or what if there's a, a device malfunction uh, for any other uh, type of device that's out there? A flashlight is in a backpack or something like that. Then we're discharging continuously at this max or pulse rating that we had set up. That could be a problem and hey, Bad performance too when we're up there, like I mentioned before, the maximum pulse ratings. Mishandling is always dangerous, and I wanted to put this here, even though we're not talking, this isn't about ratings, 
mishandling, bad wraps, torn wraps, dents, drops, uh, shocks, vibration, things like that, increase the risks of using that battery. So always try to avoid any of those. How can we lower the risks of using batteries with exaggerated ratings? Well, stick to the continuous rating. It increases performance. Your batteries will have a longer overall life and it helps keep the risks from going up anymore. Don't use it unless you know the true continuous current rating. And you either have to find someone who's tested batteries. I have links to my blog at ECF below where I've got uh, all my test reports and my ratings tables. There are other great testers out there, HKJ and Joshua Bardwell for LiPos and some others that are out there. SMC Racing does good uh, testing for LiPos. So stick to the true continuous rating uh, when you know it. Now, examples of risky ratings. Any 3,000 milliampere hour, uh, excuse me, any greater than 3,000 milliampere hour 18650 battery rated over 10 amps, that's risky because that's an exaggerated rating. That's an, a rating. I'll say BS then. Any 3,000 milliampere hour battery with a rating over 15 to 20 amps, that's a false rating. Don't use it at that. Any 18650 rated over 30 amps or any round battery rated over 35 amps. That's an exaggerated rating. Now check out Minding Your Moss episode 29, the episode be before this, where I talk about how to spot false ratings. It's not a foolproof way to, to find every false rating, but there's some good tips in there for you to help decide whether this may be false or may not be a false rating. I think a lot of where this comes from and a lot of the debate on things is that we've come to expect too much from our batteries now. Too many years of BS ratings from so many different companies have given us some really unrealistic expectations for the batteries we use. Because not a lot of us are blowing ourselves up, many other people are thinking, hey, I've used, done this for years, it's gotta be safe. But that's just not true. We've just gotten lucky because it's relatively hard to blow them up. But we have been shortening life and we have been getting crap performance from our batteries for years because of these unrealistic expectations. We need to understand that we've been increasing the, increasing the risk and losing performance for much too long now. And it, it, I don't know how to change that cycle or how to interrupt it, but it's here. These cells are great, but they just can't do what we want them to do sometimes. And a perfect example of that is a, an Enoch. 35 amp, 3600 milliamp hour battery. Incredibly popular in Asia. It cannot be rated over eight to 10 amps. No battery exists with that capacity or even close to that capacity that's rated over eight to 10 amps. And it could be rated a lot lower than that. So we've got just much too much an unrealistic expectation for the batteries we're using. And that leads to us wanting to believe these big numbers and wanting to have a, a single 18650 in a nice tiny little vaping device do 90 watts or, or have a super high power flashlight use a 18350 or something like that. And this is what leads to the danger, to the increased risks, these unrealistic expectations. So are they dangerous, exaggerated ratings? Yeah, they definitely can be. But there are things we can do to lower the risks, to be more aware, to lower our expectations, and not only enjoy lower risks, but enjoy better performance for our batteries and longer battery life overall. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.